you know, it's been a while since we did anything very controversial on this channel. And they say that a controversy is good content. Well, I mean, that's not going to be this this video because we're not covering anything that's that controversial. We're just talking about pay to win. That's that's not a hot topic right now, is it? There, 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 there wasn't a game that recently released that brought this into the forefront of everyone's minds or anything that has caused numerous videos to come out on this. No, no, that's that's. No one's going to have conflicting opinions about what this could mean for this genre and what could possibly go wrong or happen and this will just be nice and and simple and and ev everyone will be nice in the comments section i made a mistake i made a minute i may have made a, i may have made a mistake there's a reason why we're going to cover this topic today and the reason is because of a game like diablo immortal or lost art pay to win has become a it's, it's been thrust back into the, the conscious of all of us, kind of like when Archage made their entire version of the game that was supposed to be not pay to win. When you're making a version of your game that is not that thing, it, it's, it begs the question of what is happening to this genre? But to really cover this, we need to define what pay to win is in the first place. And when you think about it, it makes it seem like, oh, it's this really simple thing that's easy to discuss. It's not. It, it's not a simple term. It's not a simple umbrella term that means the same thing to everyone. My version of pay to win is probably going to be very different from your version of pay to win. And that's okay, but we need to at least acknowledge that. Acknowledge that there are going to be some gray areas. And it is not a term that can just apply universally. It's also not something we can ignore. As it's as we've seen from the recent success monetarily for Diablo Immortal, I mean, one thing has remained clear even as our tolerance level has shifted. This is still a winner for games. 24 million in two weeks of microtransactions is a very clear indication to game developers that, hey, there's at least some at least short term benefit for making a game like this and doing it this way. We, the players, are still buying into it. But I want to bring something up here. Yes, Diablo Immortal had a lot of backlash, but it still feels like a low stakes test for Blizzard and really the genre as a whole. If they could take a mobile game and just throw it on PC, and see what happens, what kind of microtransactions are allowed or not. This game was egregious. It was a, it was aggressively monetized and we all saw that and we got angry. But it's almost like it could be a precursor to Diablo 4. What kind of things could be put in Diablo 4 that we would accept, that would give the game longevity. Now Blizzard has come out and said, hey, 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 don't worry. We're not gonna put stuff like that in Diablo 4. It's just gonna be paid expansions and cosmetics. Now remind me when it was that we decided as, as a group that paid cosmetics in a, in a game that you pay full box price for are okay because it's been one of those slow, gradual creeps as we have leaned more and more into this alternative way of monetizing games, our tolerance has shifted. And a game like Diablo Immortal comes out with their ridiculous monetization and gambling, essentially gambling mechanics. 
We say, that's awful. That is so, so bad. But that makes the other things a little bit more palatable. It's a little easier to handle. And as the goalpost moves, we need to be aware of what's happening and we need to be cognizant of what pay to win actually is and what it means to each of us. I'm going to tell you essentially what it means to me. And that may differ from your understanding, and that's totally fine. Let me know down in the comments what it is to you. But without further ado, let's get into it a little bit. So the first argument is going to be the PvP argument. Now this is the most direct and obvious version of pay to win. It's going to be direct competition. That is player versus player. If you can buy an advantage that will directly impact another player, is that not essentially pay to win? Is that not perhaps the worst aspect of it? Not only are you gaining that advantage, but it is at the expense of another player's enjoyment. This is also, I believe, the most detrimental long term to any game. If you need to put money into the game just to compete, where's the fun? This gradually hurts even paying customers as those who don't benefit eventually move on, leaving nothing but the whales. Arch Age and APB Reloaded have shown up on many pay to win lists for this reason. This has shown up in other games outside of the MMO genre as well. There are laundry lists of mobile games with unlockable heroes increasing power through pay to win mechanics. I think this may remain the most insidious version and perhaps the most universally reviled because of the direct impact and ease of identifying. But it's far from the only thing we can label as pay to win, at least in my estimation. Brings us to pay to win versus pay for convenience. How do we break that down? If you ask 10 people what pay to win is, you'll get 10 different answers. These may vary from descriptions as wide ranging as any sort of monetization to as strict as pay to win referring to items that are only available through real world spending and give distinct advantage. I think of pay to win like it's on a continuum and my tolerance for it wanes the closer we get to what I consider the most egregious, predatory monetization. That is, the games that get you hooked before introducing aggressive monetization later that is required to progress. Another video might be warranted on that alone. Just to further explain that term a little bit, predatory monetization is purchasing systems that disguise long-term costs involved for players until said players are already emotionally and financially invested in the game. But let's, let's back up and move back to the umbrella term. Pay to win. One of the biggest arguments I've seen is pay to win versus pay for convenience. A prime example of this would be an experience potion. Now in the week before this video, I put out a community poll to YouTube asking a simple question. Do you consider experience potions in an MMO pay to win? The vote split out 60% yes, 34% no, and 5% bloop bloop. I'm a fish. This was a completely scientific poll with a perfect sample size and no margin for error. But at the heart of this question was, does gaining experience faster mean you pay to win? Or is it just more convenient? A similar question could be asked for fast travel or other different conveniences you get in games like bag space. This is often where the argument of pay to win for many will come down to implementation. Is a 25% experience potion pay to win? What if the game's leveling curve is built around that 25% being included? What is gained by leveling faster? What advantages or content is gated? In my opinion, it comes down to that implementation. Now this is where we get into some nuance. What is convenience and what is a win? Well, Ko Carnage puts it very simply and I'll link his video below. Tough Essentially to Ko, Pay to win is something that someone who can afford to pay for in-game can get that someone cannot. This works neatly with something like an item that increases your stats. But how does this work with something that speeds up rather than replaces? By that definition, it doesn't necessarily mean that that would be pay to win unless you put a timestamp on it. So what point would that be? 50% experience potion? 100%? 200%? What about 1000%? How many invested hours must be skippable with in-game purchases to make it pay to win and not pay for convenience? Does the idea that it's still technically obtainable mean it's not pay to win, but pay to progress faster? It's murky for me. 
but I realize that it might be very clear to some of you. I found that as I've gotten older, my tolerance for convenience in games has grown a bit. I've noticed as my available time has trended down and my available disposable income has trended up a little bit from when I was eating hamburger helper for three days in a row, leaving it out on the stove because I forgot to put it in the fridge and eating it and hoping that I didn't, you know, get some really bad bacteria or actually not even probably thinking about that bad bacteria until my wife pointed it out to me. And then how... How am I still here? Over the years, I know I have become more susceptible to convenience, specifically things like experience potions. Have you? Are you steadfast in your resistance to only paying box price or a subscription fee? I mean, I just recently did a stint in EverQuest where out of, I don't know, about 16 hours of gameplay time, I used about 14 hours of experience potions. While a bonus was going on. Does that mean that I succumbed? Did I did I give in to pay to win? I mean, I didn't buy the EverQuest perk. So, I suppose you could say, I paid to be mediocre. Am I okay with paying to be mediocre? I might be. Speaking of paying to be mediocre, this is a terrible time to announce that we have memberships on this channel. So if you'd like to support this channel with my own pay to win mechanics, there's a link down there below. So we have to ask ourselves as we try and digest what is pay to win versus what is pay to convenience and what that means for us. Is it inevitable? I am inevitable. The answer to me is both yes and no. Over the years, we've seen what I consider to be pay to convenience items coming into about just about every type of MMO, whether it's free to play, buy to play or subscription based. In EverQuest, you can buy experience potions and perks that include not losing your level when you die, and extra raid currency, all while still offering a subscription which is required for their special servers, like progression servers. In Star Wars The Old Republic, which also has both a subscription and a free-to-play model like EverQuest, they had weekly limits to core components of the game such as PvP and PvE instances which you can expand with purchases from the store with real money. They thankfully got rid of these limits over the last few years, but they're still held on to credit limits for free to play. And I think that's where we come into is this, this opening up of free to play has allowed for different types of monetization. As you try to get more eyes on your game, you also try to find new ways to monetize. And that monetization has crept into the traditional space. If you're paying for a subscription and then paying for a perk and then paying for an experience potion that's not free to play at all that's not buy to play you are now paying through multiple different ways in the same game where at one point you only paid a subscription fee pay for convenience is here to stay and i don't see it being excluded from any mmos currently or ones in development in the future so if you consider it pay to win i have some really bad news for you so why no well, if we go back to the distinct advantage being caused by pay to win, we do have the ability to assert some control over our genre through collective outrage. There's a longevity issue at stake here. Aggressive monetization has been rejected by and large by the PC MMO community with intense pressure on in development MMOs not to over monetize and current MMOs to avoid or reduce aggressive monetization. For example, the recent changes in Lord of the Rings Online gifting much of their content for free, and Star Wars The Old Republic removing some of their hideous restrictions. But it remains a delicate balance with leveling boosts in subscription games like Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft. As players, one thing we have to take into consideration is that subscription and box prices for games have stagnated for years, and games will always look for ways to maximize the viability of their product. This is still a business after all. While there will be passionate developers eager to make something they would play, they still have to pay for their art team. They still have to put food on their tables. There's nothing unethical or wrong about seeking profit for something you've made, but how you go about it can have drastic ramifications. MMOs will continue to test the tolerance level of the player base. Calculations will be made on the return versus outrage. It's naive to think that a game like Diablo Immortal wasn't carefully calculated, weighing the returns of heavy monetization against potential negative response. Consider this to be Blizzard's and many other game companies' wake-up call to the current state of the market when it comes to monetization. Pay to win, however you describe it, is here to stay. And you are not immune. I'm 
not immune. I have purchased experience potions in EverQuest. I have purchased level boosts in World of Warcraft. And I personally have always thought of myself as being very anti pay to win. I raged at Diablo Immortal. I raged at Lost Ark. And then I thought about my own behavior and thought about how I have essentially paid into the system here. So do I pay to win or do I pay for convenience? What do you do? What part of this monetization will you be willing to accept? And what is your red line? My red line is randomization. Randomizing items that are required to be the best in the game. That to me is my red line that just drives me crazy. So we often look at feature creep as an issue in in-development MMOs. Perhaps we should also be looking at monetization creep in our current ones. My name is Redbeard Flynn, and if this video did not make you unsubscribed, why not take a look at this video over here, which is another controversial take on the Chosen One storyline in MMOs and if it is good or bad for the genre. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.